I'm wearing a muscle shirt that says Come Caca. <laughs> At yeah. the formal dinner, that means eat shit, Eric. And, <laughs> and I walk, I walk into the formal dinner. <laughs> I don't care. And my comadre just says, "Comadre," looking at my wife, she says, "Comadre, don't look now, but he's back." <laughs> and everybody's in tuxedos and formal wear. And I walk in wearing a come caca t-shirt. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabe que let's do the show porque I got a lot of things to do. Then I go go that dry cleaner I eat by Kid Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza y algo que es Neil Spor Spor and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Attention listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pew problem? Houston, we have a pew problem. Hey, so Manscaped, you know what Manscaped is, right? I know what Manscaped so is. So Manscaping, these dudes have cleared you for take up. It's a fourth generation. It's a brand new mower 4.0. You kick your pubes to the next planet. What there. planet is that? That's a long ways away wherever Mars? it is. Planet the Pelos? next one is Mars. Mars. <laughs> Planet Pelos, I like that. With the performance package, they're 4.0. So the orbit in your pants will feel like it has zero gravity because when you use the best tools for your palito down there and your huevitos, you are the leaders in male grooming. Take it from there a friend of mine who called me and said that he's never felt safer down there. There you with go. less pelos. You know, it's almost like would you let your house grow with all the bushes so nobody could see the house? No, you'd want it to be clean. Right? You'd want it to be clean. Topiary, a little monito, like a little doll or something, a dolphin. <laughs> There's ladies that do their, their pubes in a heart shape. I think about those should do like an arrow. Uh, uh, That's fun. Or flames. Yeah, flames. You got to go like, flames. You know, there you go. Like, wow, you're going <laughs> okay, so fast down there. <laughs> That's So join the two million worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off of free shipping with code OMG High. That's a lot. That's good. That's you good. get your wells taken care of and you get 20% off. So your pedals will probably be like 75% off, but then you'll be doing it with 20% off of the of the price. And if you cut flames, you'll do it even faster. And if you cut flames, I'm going to cut flames <laughs> in mine. What did we Still do with Austin? Man. How did Austin do, man? Good, huh? Good, yeah. No, people were... Uh, so I did the thing you're never supposed to do, and I was reading YouTube comments, and all sorts of things. For, and they they're all No, they're all very positive. I don't give a fuck if people hate me. I, I've been around too long to be, to be fucking liked. I like to, listen, if you hate me, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you're you're more. I mean, hate is a, you know. If they hate you, why are they listening to this podcast? <laughs> uh, you want to read some of the comments that they say? <laughs> you know, I I don't know why I don't. You know, I don't know what it is, man. Like, what? How would it be if all of this hate was actually comments about good comments about saying, hey, you know what, Gil? I love listening to you on that podcast, and I I think it's great. You've been married such a long time, and you know, do, you and George have a great relationship together. It's interesting to see it grow. Instead of saying, like, you don't need that motherfucker. What the fuck? Mm. Gil, you can have your own fucking podcast with crime. You don't need that fucking old buto right there. <laughs> that was sent from... I sent that one. <laughs> that was, you know, the worst, the, the worst verified one I got, account. The, the worst one I got, well, it was actually in an Instagram message. Yeah. And I just laughed at it. Somebody said, how come you're alive? How come you're not dead instead of Richard? Good God. He should be alive and you should be dead. Why is that? Who, who thinks that? Who thinks that the fucking Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, should yeah. be alive? One of his and fan a, members. And a detective should be dead. That's One of his fan members. And I, I just laugh. But you know what? It. These guys, whoever that fan member is, if you're a Richard Ramirez fan, I don't know. God bless you. But you, you, what do you make for dinner? Like a fucking cauldron of fucking bats <laughs> and some fucking cat culos That's what got and us some in fucking this. dead hummingbirds <laughs> and a fucking stew with some potatoes like you know cat culos they, they work at cat culos they, they probably work at a place that fucking maybe they they you know like not like Austin because not all of his were black but you know they finger they paint their fingernails and they live in this false fucking dark world that they create in their own mind yeah I just laughed I didn't care it I does care. I mean 
What's sad to think is that this is what's in people's hearts. I mean, Trump didn't do it. it that's in people's hearts. Oh, yeah. He definitely drew, he drew it out. I mean, he drew it out and made it okay. To do it in public. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and even like the right, you know, send me messages or whatever, the dicks, you know. <laughs> you're getting dicks. Cops holding the right. their dicks. I mean, is that really, a, you're a cop. Is that really is, wrong? <laughs> is it wrong to send an IG message when you're holding no, your, I mean, hold your dick? Palo? <laughs> <laughs> With the little fucking, like, the little umbrella, like the Lidsville thing, you know, remember Lidsville? The, the, from the football hat? Like that? The I fucking campana. I look at it, I, I don't give two shits about those people. I'm 71 years old, I've made it this far without them. I don't need them now, they're not going to set me back. I've had way too much fun in my life, and I'm having more fun today than I've had in years. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's I mean, great. that's really, Jeff living has, well is yeah. the best revenge. Yeah. We're all, we're all going to go. You yeah. Know? And I've seen a lot of people that have gone already. You know, I think about myself at 60, and I think about, you know, seeing my grandmother and thinking in the car. But, I mean, I don't know if I can't can't really remember. I didn't hate her, but she was, you know, everybody, everybody's fucking grandma was cold. What the fuck, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, my, my, my wife already my, knows that I still hurt. make fun of her mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, she told you that. I mean. And then you snapped her out of it. I think you. Yeah. I think you. When you said, "Hey, what if I go to Vietnam and I don't yeah. come back?" Yeah. But you snapped her out of it when she probably yeah. said, "She hated want, she, me in the beginning." She didn't want that to happen. Once I became yeah. a good guy, then she loved me. Then I became evil. But you were the same guy. Yeah, I hadn't changed. I still haven't changed. I'm still the same guy. I used to make fun of her then. I still make fun of her today. And my she, wife just all, all my wife ever <laughs> says is, "Leave her alone." You know? <laughs> <laughs> how long did she? How old did she live to be? Uh, she was 93. Wow. Maybe right. 90, maybe even 95. She was 95. She like a year and a half ago or what? Yeah, mm-hmm. she died uh, two years ago. She went, oh, oh, my wow. God. She Goodness. lived a long time. Yeah, that's... Oh, she did. And, she, she, and you know what? She great. saw, she got to see you create this family and your wife be married all these got, years. Got to see. She lived with us the last six and a half years oh, of her oh, life. No kidding. <laughs> I love she, that. She, she got <laughs> first hand. Yeah, like he said, got to see. She lived with us the last six and a half years of her life. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. In the same house, right? She didn't get any bigger. (laughs) In the same (laughs) house. I wasn't living alone. (laughs) She she was there. You know, I could tell you what time of day it was by what was on TV. She'd sit in the same place. I could tell you what was on every day. Price is right (laughs) o'clock. What did she watch? And the only show that I used to sit down and watch with her was Two and a Half Men. I had never seen this show until she started watching. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> How does she watch it? She's so, watching Two and a Half Men? Two and a Half Men. That's hey, you know, hilarious. That, that's great. I, I didn't have, at the, there for a while, uh, DirecTV didn't have uh, Sportsnet LA. Them and oh, yeah. Spectrum were, ha- they were so, oh, yeah. and, and my Couldn't swag and I would Dodgers. sit there and say, are we going to watch the Dodgers today? I said, no, they're not on TV. Well, why not? We don't have that station. I had DirecTV at the time. And finally, I just told my wife, you know what, it's just easier. So I got, I ha- had direct. I went ahead and ordered Spectrum Television yeah. just so she could watch the Dodgers on TV. You know, that's 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 incredible. You ever, when you were growing up, was was it ever so hot in your house that you had to watch TV in the front yard? So we didn't have, we only had one TV. Is either? I mean, they would just take it to the front yard. No, it just stood Man, inside. It used to be so fucking hot yeah. in my grandmother's house. Went outside. It wasn't to watch TV then. It was the again, the sky is with the fellows, with the friends. Kids playing. <laughs> I lived in a cul-de-sac. So, so did I. You could watch the- so we had a, we, we so had a I, baseball actually. diamond. You did too? Yeah, I lived in a cul-de-sac. Yeah, did you? We had a baseball diamond Fucking hunky. painted on the cul-de-sac. <laughs> oh, the poor people lived in cul-de-sacs. Oh, the other wonderful white people, all the cars. See you later. <laughs> I'll be coming back around tonight. <laughs> Nobody ever fucking got lost in our neighborhood. Oh, you oh, do there now? We go. Oh, come on. So, so I take that back. This is the Horvath cul-de-sac. The Horvath, the Horvath <laughs> Boulevard. And my oh. daughter lives in the house with her family in the same house that I grew up in. Yeah, that's 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 badass, huh? Yeah, man. All right, what are we talking about today? Well, we're we're guestless. Just uh, just us and our and our thoughts. I mean, we obviously have. Yeah, Gil. Did, did we talk to Bobby Lee? Uh, I haven't spoken to him yet. Do you want me to get yeah. him up about bringing him back on? Yeah, let's bring yeah. him back. No, I think there's a. Bunch but also, of let's thank the together. let's thank the sponsors. I mean that that uh, the food. What was the food one that that they gave me the food at the house was awesome. Uh, I think that one's Hello Fresh. Hello there, Fresh. Is that, right? is that yeah. Hello Fresh? And then we've got uh, pre- preview. We've got more uh, more. And then what else? Manscape. Hey, I don't listen. That's a very personal question. And one condition your wells are in, but Manscape 
The 4.0. What are they? they have some crazy oh, ass name, right? Oh yeah, the uh, Eliminator. What's it called? This is uh, <laughs> this is the uh, make the sure they're just eliminating hair. It's the Lawnmower 4.0. The Lawnmower 4.0. Yeah, and this is this one's all space themed, so it's talking about kick your pubes to the next planet. <laughs> you know, um, I've never tried it. Yeah. They did when I had a surgery. You know, they they should. Oh, yeah. That was one of my out, jokes. The only time you out. trimmed your hair is when you got your appendix taken out. The uh, uh, <laughs> but also. One time there was a, a a woman coming over to see me, and I was in in Houston, allegedly, and I <laughs> and I shaved my my pelos and I nicked myself down there. <laughs> and then when she put her hand down there. She was like, "Oh my God!" And I was bleeding, and she took off in horror. And you just thought, told her you should have just told her it was your period. Yeah, <laughs> I should have said. I'm on my period. <laughs> Baby, there's some confusion. Well, that's an exclamation point <laughs> down here. Yeah. You know, those things are all uh, cochinas. People are crazy. Just scrolling through Instagram. Just nasty. <laughs> just nasty. It's not. It's not. It's well, not. People used to, you used to have to work hard to see a girl's culo. You know, sometimes you fell off the ladder. <laughs> you could risk, bo- <laughs> risk bodily harm. See. Remember there was a I, peeping I, Tom. I, I, can't be, I can't be talking about that stuff too and much. You know, you could jack off and get on the, on the, on the siding of the house. Then you'd have to go back and chip it off. You'd be like before DNA. You, you know, know, you could you could use fire a, one off on someone's window sill. I use, I use then, a story. Then you I use live. a story then, to get a kite. Remember when I told you guys a, they're flying around with your DNA? I told you guys about looking at <laughs> fear in the eyes. Talking. You never stop talking <laughs> about getting that fear in your eyes and looking. I had a case right there in East LA where some guy got in a car with some girls cruising on Whittier Boulevard, and. Then he stuck a gun, and there was two girls and a guy. He stuck a gun in the side of the ribs and said, come on, we're going to party now. And I said, okay. He said, hey, come here, kiss me. I want you to kiss me. And then the driver said, hey, if we're going to party, let's stop and get something to drink. So he pulled in the liquor store, and he just said, okay, but I'm going with you. And if you say anything, if you do anything, he says, you're dead. So he gets off the car, and he goes with her. And it just so happened that a, wow. a police car, black and white, pulled into the curb lane because it was going to turn right. She screamed. They jumped out. They got him. They wow, got the man. gun. Oh, they got wow. everything. He went to jail. So I get the case the next day. That night, a night detective talked to him and sent him down to CJ, down where, for uh, down What's there. What's the difference between a night detective and a day detective? Day detectives work days, nights work nights. <laughs> but the, the guy at night doesn't want to do shit? Or... Well, he, he, he takes care of all the arrestees that come in on the night shift. He may do a preliminary interview, just get a few facts. The day dick is the one that's going to handle the case. It's going to be my case. Okay. So he, he interviewed. I, I come in. That detective had to go to court. He saw me. He says, hey, by the way, I interviewed your guy last night from the kidnapping. It wasn't no fucking kidnapping. A couple of tramps picked him up. It was an inoperative starter pistol. That's all it was. Like for races? Yes. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I said, all right. So I looked. It looked like a real gun, you know, but it was just a starter pistol, and it wasn't operative at that. So I said, I took my partner, I said, come on, let's go. I want to go talk to this guy. So I went down and I talked to him and I said, hey, partner, you know, you've already been admonished. And I knew his brother because I'd handled his brother a few times. I said, hey, you know, I know your brother. Hey, come on, I want to talk to you. But I know the guys that advi- advised you your rights last night. I want to talk to you about it some more because this case was fascinating to me. And I said, but you got to waive your rights again. And he said he agreed. I read him his rights. He waved, and I said, "Okay." Oh, wow. So you read him the rights, and says anything you say can. Yes. And do you, mm-hmm. you understand the rights? He said yes. Yes. And then he said, "I waive them, and I'll talk to you." He was willing to talk to me because he thought I was the Akias. I was good to the family, and he trusted me. He never should have trusted me. Wow. So I talked to him, and I said, "Before we really get in, I got to tell you something. I was reading the report where you got the gun and you stuck it in the side of her ribs, and you know what? But by the grace of God, the only reason I'm here today." is because somebody helped me. I said, because when I was a kid, I was a travieso, and I used I was a peeping Tom, and I used to go around at night and look in windows. I said, and I'd start whacking off. He says, and then just before I busted a nut, I'd tap on the window because I wanted to see him scream. Oh, wow. I said, and that got my nut. And I said, and when I'm looking at this case where you stuck the gun in there and made her kiss you, that reminded me of when I was a peeping Tom, because that's why you were doing it. He looks at me and says, yeah. That's why I did it. I knew the gun wasn't working, but that's why I did it, eh? I got off on that shit. Got a file on the case for kidnapping and a few other charges because he copped out because 
what I'd learned from were no, the look of fear, and I'd seen it. I just wanted to try it. I, officially, I was never a peeping Tom, but I used that was. to get him to <laughs> cop out. I never thought about tapping on the window, though, because I was just satisfied just to be fl- throwing on the side of the house right there. <laughs> Eye contact, too risky. Like nachos too and risky. leaves with a little creme on top. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, that, some, uh, honey, what's this outside uh, the window? Strawberry at the oil. Oh, oh. <laughs> Man, that's so. The, so, what's the what's the? Uh, I would say psychology. What's the psychology of a dude in the park op- opening his jacket or peeping tom and doing that on the street? Or if a car drives by, and the guy is, is is jacking off as a car drives by, and the lady sees him. He wants to see the look, the startleness of of the victim. The victim is whoever he's flashing. Wow, that's right. If wow. she, if she were, if it were, let's just say, for sake of arguments, it's a she. If he opened up his coat and there's his dick, and he, she looked at him and said, "Is that all you got? That ain't shit. That's a li- That's not even a dick. That's a peepee." He'd oh, cover up you, and leave. You never want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. that. He'd cover up and leave. He didn't get the effect he wanted. She's belittling him now. It's in his court. He's out of there. Right. He didn't scare her. He didn't bother her. And then, as soon as he's gone, then she may think, oh, shit, what did he do? You know, call a cop to whatever. She, but her first instincts were, you know, Harmony, is that all you got? Laugh at him. Somebody with street moxie would do that. That's a tough thing to do, though. But that know, person is not, but, me. <laughs> no, but that person is a non is the peeping tom a non threatening person? Most of them are non threatening. Most of them are non threatening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that guy did all that shit. Did it matter that it was a starter gun? The person doesn't know it's a starter gun. No, no, not it to the victim. It doesn't matter. Not to the victim. For her, for all intents and purposes on this case, it was a real gun. Right. She, does, does that change does that ever affect it if it is like an actual, you know, a real pistol versus starter pistol? Versus back then whatever? that wouldn't have you know when you had a kidnapping, you used a gun, mm-hmm. the gun would be an enhancement. Mm-hmm. This is not an operable gun, so it wouldn't be an enhancement. Why do people okay. kidnap other people? And it's usually somebody that people know, right? Not say, I'll I, say, I, but somebody I, become fixated on somebody. I really don't know. People kidnap it's kids very dangerous, from pedophilia. Yeah. yeah, you know, for, mm-hmm. for kids, that's easy. That's, that's pedophilia. Adults, it's usually because of, they either want to rape, you know, in case of female, you know, kidnap and rape some kind of sexual deviant, or kidnapped for ransom or I'm, I'm pissed off I'm angry just like this guy that just got filed on he drove his uh, the mother of his children three kids in the back seat she's in the front seat they'd been in a fight he got her threw in the car and drove up the up the off ramp on the freeway and she got killed the kids got injured and he got taken into custody he fought the kid it was just a few days ago oh is this was this out here was yeah this the, like the reptile like he thought his Kids had like reptilian oh, DNA yeah. or some that? crazy no, shit. That was a, no, that was another guy. That was another case. Oh, that was white another dude. one. Okay. Some of the white dudes, they, they think that. That was a white guy that got like caught coming back from, uh, got caught in uh, Mexico, I believe. Oh, really? But he, his kids were over there. He took what them is over that, there. though? Why do people think that there are, are there people with fucking reptilian? Fucking well, I, I just think that some that, that look like not, reptiles, like but they're not. <laughs> I think that guy's been smoking too much meth or either that or the guy was just a. Well, some of that stuff's so. QAnon too, and I don't, I don't know which I don't know what is QAnon what is and it. which way. But like, at some at a certain point, it's like you know the, these billionaire Democrats running the world are also like lizard people. It, oh. it gets into that sort of territory. Oh, so I think okay. that's what it was. What about that one that they, the Pizza article. Gate where they where they thought that in was that in D.C. or yeah, that was some D.C. In Jersey or pizza somebody pl- that I think that DC pizza the place. QAnon right yes, DC. Mm-hmm. that they thought that they were running a pedophilia ring out of this pizza parlor. And this guy drives down there with a loaded weapon and goes in there and tells the, and pulls a weapon on everybody, right? Yeah. And he says, open that door right there. There's kids in there. And that guy's like, Dark, it's pizza dough. There ain't kids in there, motherfucker. There's like supplies, like pizza sauce and dough. And he goes, open it up. And they open it, and it's a storage place for the pizzas. And then when they took him out, and the cops had him on the ground, one of the cops says, can't believe how stupid this fucking guy is. This guy's like, what the fuck are you are you doing what, what are you doing and he pretty much said you know they were running a pedophilia ring out of that pizza parlor and the cop's face was like what they're not <laughs> yeah they're not and i had to save him he's on the ground i had to save him he's like hey man they're not dude like this none of that's in there i wonder if you picked up any of those mattresses on the way home with a little the nachos on uh, no the one the commercial now looks like a big piece of pizza 
And he says, can I have it? Can I have it? And he goes, and oh. the guy says, yeah, <laughs> go ahead and take it. And then they show what it really, it's just a mattress. But he saw pepperoni pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Grubhub commercial yeah. or something like that. I think those are, uh, those are some funny ones. You, you guys order Grubhub and, and uh, Postmates. meals on Postmates? I'm, I'm, and, I'm and what do I have? What am I, next door? What's mine? Uh, What's mine? What do you, oh, there, there's the DoorDash. DoorDash? I, I use DoorDash. Oh, you're talking about your like, ne- my next bite on, thing, the George yeah, Lopez bite. tacos? Yeah. yeah. I don't and know. And churros and all that stuff. Mexican yeah, yeah. soda, the, the, the one that fucks your teeth up like everybody in Mexico. Not everybody in Mexico, but remember the ones that look like uh, fucking canela, their teeth? Uh-huh. I just went to all the, the den- brown, all the browns. <laughs> I just went to the dentist this morning, got my teeth cleaned. Oh, and they're looking, they're looking good. Yeah, mine You can see the glean even man. from here. <laughs> you know, as a 60 year old man, should you be eating three bags of Tootsie, Tootsie Rolls no. the, on the stick <laughs> on the fucking the last weekend? <laughs> I think I'm too old for that. But but um, <laughs> I don't know if at any point it's advised for you to eat three bags of two zero. They're like. pretty good though, man. Oh yeah. Remember the little owl? Like, how long would it take to get to you know, that commercial? To get to the center of a two zero pop? Wow. Oh yeah. The, two, yeah. One, two, three, <laughs> three. <laughs> the um, what about Richard Ramirez? Like, how how significant was the finding that um, the appointment card in that car? Oh, that was very important. To that us. wasn't that yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, that was that gave us the information to to the dentist. We got his X-rays. We could tell that he had problems with his teeth. He was going to be going back. So, so he gets here. He has problems with teeth are bad. Like we saw those X-rays, in a lot of pain, right? Fucking abscess and yeah, just no, abscess and crazy mouth. And then he said, "I got to, I got to get some place to look at these teeth." Right, because they were so bad. He went into the place right there in Chinatown or something. Chinatown. And mm-hmm. Guy looked at him, and then started treating him. And started treating him. And then you guys said, "Oh, this guy's gonna come back." Like his teeth are so fucked up. He's got a. He's I got a hold back. of his X-ray. The doctor gave me a copy of his X-rays. I took him to uh, a good, oh. a good buddy of mine who grew up together, Bobby Bersano, who is now a. A uh, dentist. I took him to Bobby. Said, "Hey, Bobby, look at what can he tell me?" He says, "Oh, the guy's got an abscess. He's going to be back. He's going to be in pain." Wow. And so, and and Richard was always a cash paying customer. He didn't have any credit cards, so he mm-hmm. cash paying. So that's when we stuck the guys inside the uh, inside the dental office. And they left, and yeah, an executive from my department said, "This is a waste of money not coming back," because we were paying him seven days a week. 12 hours a day, they were getting overtime, they were getting fat, mm. and he said, pull them out, put the alarm in there. So LAPD came, put the alarm in there, and it was nobody's fault other than the executive from my department that ordered my guys out of there. The alarm didn't work. The alarm didn't work. It was a malfunction. That's all it was, a malfunction alarm. And was it like an alarm that someone would trip? No. Or just like how The how doctor would, had how to press the button. Okay, okay. And the doctor did. The doctor did his job. It didn't Law work. enforcement didn't do our job. You know, it didn't work. So when yeah. he pushed the button, it didn't, Nothing it didn't happened. connect anywhere. So, no. so yeah. But if those guys would have stayed in there, which is which is the old way of... Yeah. I'm, I mean, not the old way, but it was probably got the most them. effective way to to they have somebody... Call. They couldn't call, I guess, the sheriff? Yeah. They, <laughs> they couldn't call. I didn't they hear some... Call, like, like 911. Oh, no. No, no call 911. He was given instructions. Just hit the alarm. They'll come down. And, because uh, it's dangerous. Yeah. Call, yeah. yeah. If he, if Not he, even like give him an extra hit of like laughing gas or something like that. Just chill him out for a little while. Plus, it, it would have been difficult. The doctor was, it was difficult to understand. Very thick accent. Oh, really? And so it, it would have been tough. But our guys would have, we had two Asian guys in there. They didn't take care of business. Where did the appointment card come from? Is that just covered at a, at a crime scene? When, was that? No. In one of the cars where he tried to kidnap a uh, kid up in the valley where he, hit an on-ramp, and the car got impounded. We went back to look, and we found this little plastic, a little cheap plastic case, and there was an appointment card in there. And that's where we knew he had been to the doctor. Wow. That's what starts to, to crack it. The, um, But those things are the ones that is make the best... <laughs> they make the best uh, police work because it's done from person to person. Yeah. If you go in there. You trust yourself. If you go in there and I don't know you're an, first of all, I think undercover is maybe the toughest job of police. Is it? Or being, uh, a, you, or being a lady detective going out there with your choncho out there. But you're still a police officer. <laughs> you can't be out there with your fucking panocha out there. You're a fucking law enforcement. 
Huh? Yeah, they they do it. They have to. It's a job. They don't do it anymore, though. Hey, thank what about goodness. if a dude was a, was if they were looking for like uh, Andrew Cunanan and they said, hey, what if Grant was a detective? Oh, we, well, you're a good looking dude. You go out there matter. with some it, dolphin it, it, shorts. There, there's, 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 <laughs> bent over drinking water. There's a danger to the job. Excuse they do what me. they what they're called upon to do. If we needed that, we'd have done it in a heartbeat. You know, th- that's just the nature of the job. Should, you know what we should do? We should get Grant. <laughs> And, and dress them up like dolphin shorts, put them out there in the Burbank Media Center and see how long it takes before the police go up and say, okay, can we help you, young man? With a little cut shirt. Do you need a help, bit of, sir? A little, like, sun kiss, a little orange slices. Little, <laughs> kind of thing. Like a little, like, number 88, but this it's cut in half. <laughs> I think, I think I'll get my nails a, done. I think there'd be a crowd around them before <laughs> the cops got there. Huh? I'd clean up in They're Burbank. Like tacones tacones and shit, you know, little tacones. <laughs> Walking, the little... <laughs> but like but Fred they, Flintstone they, but you know when uh, I got I got uh, I got fired from a job um, when I was in my early twenties, and a, a guy was undercover at at the at, at my job. So an African American dude was pretending like you know he was a new hire and stuff. And I had some I was doing stand up, so I was driving around. So we had the we had whites. I don't think it was methamphetamine, but just whites. The bennies. The, the, the cro- yeah. The, That's the, what they used to call the, them, bennies. Cro- the white crosses. And I was, you know, going as far as I could go to perform and then still get back. And I would take the bennies in the morning. And then I remember I, the guy gave, you know, the guy's like, hey, what do you got? You know, you, you know, it's fucking whatever. The, the I, undercover cop is yeah. saying, yeah. And then, you know, so I said, you know, I have these things, but can you get more? And I said, yes. Like, I couldn't get more. I just said, yes, yeah. whatever. I'm, fuck, I like ate him. <laughs> and he thought like I was, you know, some mastermind. Fuck, mastermind, no shit. And then, uh, you know, they got me and they got, um, they got another guy. But the other guy was dealing, they were dealing coke on the night shift, which in the early 80s, that's quite, uh, not very uncommon. Pretty, pretty standard, yeah. To do, pretty standard. Yeah. I was just watching Cocaine Cowboys, the Netflix documentary yeah, about Miami. the ones with the, the... All over the place down there. <laughs> it was all over the place. And then it came here, right? There was Chicago. Uh, and uh, first time I saw cocaine was in the late 70s, just before I left patrol. I think that's when it was... And that's when it late was, 70s, uh, that was the first time. Yeah. And that's because I had an informant call me up. Her old man had just gotten picked up, sent to the joint behind a robbery, and... She was a very good friend. She called me, hey, he left some stuff back here. I said, okay, just go put it by the bush. We'll go buy it and see what it is. So I went by, and here's this uh, plastic baggie with a bunch of powder in it, and it was cocaine. I had never seen cocaine before. That way nobody went to jail. There's nothing behind it. It was his. She left it behind. I just wanted out of the house. And so well, where, You don't know where it is. That was a long time ago. You don't yeah. know where it is or anything. No, that was a long know. time ago. That was in the seventy. Couldn't charge anybody with I mean, it. He could say, "Hey, it's in the fucking garage, yeah. in oh, a no, old no. Folgers can." No, no, we does wrote it, go it up. Bad? I don't think it goes. Does it go well, bad? I don't know. Not we wrote way. it up, found yeah, narcotics, and just nobody went to jail behind it. We just got it off the street, and it was his, that's and he was going to the though. joint. That's pretty good, though. I'm gonna say, Grant. I'm looking up the Aaron? shelf, the shelf line of, of cocaine. To throw in the freezer. You never tried, time? Aaron? No. Man. Come over to my house, eh? Uh, <laughs> Grant, get your get your little shorts, eh? Come to my house. We'll have yeah, a yeah, whole they're... boy pool party. We'll have a with party. Coke in there. Yeah. Why somebody <laughs> throw it off the roof and it'll just land on, land on us? It'll, it'll, be, it'll be snowing <laughs> in Los Angeles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that that changed. I think it that changed a lot when it and then when it went to crack or meth or whatever the crack was bad in the early eighties. You still an officer then? Well, no. I in eighty one. That's when I went to homicide. So I'm working murders. Whenever we have, let's say it's a drug-related murder, first thing we do, we get the murder. The body's mine, but I need some intelligence. I need to learn more about this drug. So you get the guys from narcotics. That's all they work. Get them to help you out. Get them let's, to school you. Let's go through the anatomy of a drug murder. Okay, let's say that guys come in. <clears throat> where would it come in? Like San Pedro or whatever. So it's on the street, right? It's on and, the street. And you go in there. Maybe you have 10 grand. You buy a kilo or something, right? You can pretty reliable source. Sure. You double check. Um, and then I take it and I sell it wherever at work. Let's have it sold at work and you come back and you're still dealing with the same dude. Can you trust that guy to get another, give him another 10 and get another yeah, kilo? Yeah, you, you, you trust them. You, you get them. And where the drug deals go bad can is... You, can can, 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 uh, can a... Because, you know, instinct is a fucking huge thing, right? Like sure. instinct is a big deal. Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean... 
people are in the car. I was I was in the car one time coming home. I work nights, and something told me to. St- I had a green light, and something told me to stop. And a van with its lights off went through the intersection. And if I would have been going through, I think it probably would have killed me. Wow. Like, there's times that people don't trust their instinct. Mm-hmm. There's times that people have gotten off planes and said, fuck it, I'm getting off. And maybe the plane made it, but that person, you couldn't tell that person that they're, that they're not wrong, that their instinct isn't wrong. You know? Sure. Yeah. And with, with drugs, the person that's selling to you. You're right there. Uh, right the right there. cocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, cocaine yeah. is. Uh, same thing with methamphetamine. It, it develops into paranoia. People get paranoid. Right. Mm. So there comes the problem. You don't know if when you go to buy, if that guy thinks you're a rat. Wow. You know, you don't know if it's going to be a drug ripoff. Okay, I'm coming to buy from you. They know I've got money, so they're just going to whack me right. all in the same way. Mm-hmm. Or here you are, but you're selling in my territory, so now I'm going to kill you and take your drug because you shouldn't be selling over here. Yeah, that happens too, right? There, there's all mm-hmm. kinds of problems with uh, dope. And when you're getting especially when you get a dope for sales. And it used to be gangs, all the auditors were territorial. And then when they started becoming mobile was with dope, and they started crossing the lines. And then you started getting people killing people because they're selling in my area. Emmett came in and said, we're going to start taxing you people on the sales of dope. You know, it, it just became a lot of very, very problematic. So whenever we had a drug-related murder, we link it to drugs, then I rely on the drug experts to tell me, okay, give me all your intel, let's find out who's who's who in the zoo, who we dealing with, what's going on, where does this come from, and they've got a pretty good idea. Hmm. You work it backwards. Because uh, I think even when, like, you know, I was around, you, you were around, like, in the disco club, the disco sure. era, and, you know, even athletes got into it. Sure. A couple of Dodgers uh, oh, that yeah. had it best, Steve Howe. I remember when there, I mean, a a favor was called in by Mr. O'Malley to then uh, Sherm Block. I want to say Sherm Block was after pitches, Sherm Block, and it was during the Steve Howe era and who the contacts were and where it was coming from, and they made them all. They, They were able to find out where it was coming from. They had it bad on Steve Howe. And whoever was, but the, you know, some guys, uh, Strawberry and Gooden, you know, that Met documentary, the 30 for Stra- 30. Strawberry. Mm-hmm. Or Stra- Strawberry? <laughs> Daryl right. really went uh, down the tubes. It's too bad. He was a great player. He was a great player. There was a great, um, Adam McKay did a whole podcast called Death at the Wing that was about, like, in particular, cocaine deaths of basketball players in the 80s. And it sort of got into mm. some of the wider stuff, too. Um, but just really fascinating yeah, how much that sort of Lim bias infiltrated. Yeah, Lim bias being the big one because he was what like first or second pick in the draft or something yeah, like that, Celtics, and just yeah. just died. That right would have changed the Celtics draft, a lot. That was at a time he would have played against Magic and he would have played against Jordan. Yeah, we've been playing with Bird. That yeah, been, Bird. Birdie won won a couple championships. I think one of the big what ifs. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. less than two days after he was he was uh, chosen to for the draft, he was gone. Yeah, I think it was like cel- like when he was partying, celebrating, getting drafted. That's awful, man. Yikes. That's crazy, right? You ready right, for an out-of-the-world experience? Guys, look, look no further than the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped. And, and it really does make a difference. I'm going to say it really does make a difference, guys. I mean, this isn't the 70s, is it? No. No. If you look at some old videos of adult videos, there was a lot of stuff going on down there. And now... There's mm. hardly any pelitos, but it's, you know, like the cars are faster, like Formula One now, back then, as opposed to now. Manscaped has brought in Formula One what's up? Well, there you, well, there to you, a new level, a new speed. There you go. I said, and inside this package, you'll find the lo- their lawnmower, 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system. You know what there's there's nothing better I think in the world of uh of webos than ball deodorant because I think every dude has given himself the the sidewall the checking out the mm-hmm. sidewall test and you're like all right <laughs> you know it's a little bit of affordable it's a little bit of like you know there's some things that Gold Bond leaves to manscape. Like, Gold Bond is beautiful. But m- what they're doing over here, 
at uh, Manscaped is they're preparing you for a future of uh, less odor and less irritation. Who who wouldn't want that? Who who would who would want more odor? There's some of those that, <laughs> it's like you know, buttering like, up your turkey. Put ball <laughs> butter down there. <laughs> uh, there's some of the stuff that's uh, that's really good. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're our own best advocates. Uh, absolutely. Can all Gil? That's it. And the weed whacker is also waterproof, and it uses a nine thousand RPM your, your motor. Listen, your pedals don't have a chance. And a 360-degree rotary dual-blade system, no cutting, like myself at the Four Seasons in Houston. No mm-hmm. cutting. And a nose and hair trimmer. But also, you know, guys, don't forget about those Leonard Brecht and that fucking eyebrows that I got. But all of that stuff works in conjunction. Like, you know, there's, you know, women live for a couple of things, but one of the things they most like to do is pull and hair from your ears and your nose but they leave your you know wevels kind of you know alone that's but on you that's on us like that's on tur- manscape it's like a turkey neck the lawnmower 4 <laughs> also has a 4000 led spotlight you can turn on and off when needed for a more precise shave throughout your travels across the universe and uh, if, if I wanted a, okay. maybe a discount and free shipping what uh, is there a code I can use you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code Dila Gill. OMG High at manscaped.com. For a clean Trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. I Remember thank that movie, Space Balls? Yeah, I But this you. is better because that one was a long time ago. Yeah. And pedals have changed. They have. Changing the universe. Climate change, ball change, pedal change. That's it. Cholos shave their heads, real men shave. They're pedals. That's right. Even like a DUI, I'm sure some sure. officers used to look the other way, but not anymore, right? In the old days, I, I've taken home more drunks than I ever arrested. And in the old days, you'd get keys and throw them in the trunk of the car and go go down to Winchell's and we'll drop you off, get some coffee, drink some coffee. By the time you figure out how to get your keys out or call somebody, you know, you're okay. And what about when the cars, man? You couldn't get in the fucking garage into the into the trunk if you didn't have your key. Yeah. Like now you hit a button, the back thing opens. Yeah, I was gonna be like, how do you get back in there if, you, if your keys? You would have to take the seat sure. out, the back seat out, but you could you could get in. But now you can get in, opens uh, by itself, the gas thing yeah. opens. If you got like a and, Tesla, you can be like, hey, hey yeah. Tesla, open up my my trunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you know, today you have mothers. And I'm not against. Any of these mothers against drunk drivers, so they follow everything. If you don't push for, you know, okay, in the old days before there was mothers against drunk drivers, if I took a drunk driver and dropped him off at his house, or I took his keys, put him in the trunk of the car, and got him some coffee, it saved me time on the streets to be able to get really apprehend bad guys. Yeah. Not just a drunk driver. Whereas mothers against drunk drivers would be saying, you're not helping the rest of us out. He needs to go through the system. He should have been doing this. He should have been doing that. So I was remiss or derelict in my duties by not taking full action. But there's nothing that says mandated me. It wasn't a mandatory arrest. Yeah. You know, so those are powers of discretion. Are we live? I think I'm going live. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll, you tell me. we'll talk with these people right here. Um, yeah, the... the um, but you couldn't do that in it. You couldn't. No, and, no. And body cameras, too. I mean, maybe they don't show, well, do body cameras lie? No, body cameras. I, mean, I they don't think... have body camera on the back. There's a lot of shit going on behind a police officer. <laughs> yeah. You be going at that toy, you know, yeah. you don't see that shit. Body cameras are good, but here's what happens. Okay, so you, you take the guy, you drop him off at Winchell's, he's drunk. By the time he figures it out, he gets back to his car. Mm. But he gets his ass kicked right there at Winchell's. Then it's your fault because you didn't protect the guy. You made a man that couldn't take care of himself, Mm -hmm. you made him a a victim. So people started getting sued, people started doing this, so now with all the civil liabilities again, all you do is what you gotta do by the letter of the law. Yeah. Also, you just just cover the law by the letter of the law. And better. will will a police officer still do a solid for somebody or that that, kind of goes away with... with, 
whatever it is, whatever they're asking you to do, you got to you got to take under consideration: is it really worth me losing my job? Who's going to pay for my bills? Who's going to take care of my family? Is it really worth it for for me to help out this guy for me to lose my job? And that's where we are now. That's where, where we're before, at now. Where before a police officer might have said, "Hey, you know, um, hey man, listen, you've had a little bit too much to drink." So I'm sorry, officer. You know, I thought I was trying to make it home or whatever. And he's like, mm-hmm. okay, come with respect. Appreciate it. You know, work a lot of hours. Got with these guys, had a couple drinks. You know, I don't mean any harm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't want to go to jail. I'll, I'll pull over. I'll walk home or whatever. And, and you know, you could do that. Mm-hmm. And now maybe you now maybe you can't. Yeah, it, it's a little it tough. Took away, it took away that. I can remember taking a guy out of a uh, bar in Commerce. We got a call disturbing the peace inside, a drunk inside, didn't want to leave, they didn't want to serve him. I go in there, and as I'm walking in, he says, I know who you are. We went to school together. Now that you're a cop, you're going to kick my ass like you did in high school? And I didn't remember the wow. guy initially. And so I said, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're in the city of you? Commerce, and this guy still lived in, in Old Pico, Pico Viejo. And I said, tell you what, brother, come on. Let me give you a ride home. And, you know, you've got brothers back there. Let your brother come back and pick up your truck. A big commercial diesel truck. He just went in there and got blasted. He couldn't drive, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And so I just got on the radio and told my desk, I'm going to be off the air for 15 minutes. Put him in the back seat of my car with my partner. And then we just hauled ass to Pico, got him, dumped him off, said, there you go. Saved him a bunch of money, saved yeah. everybody a bunch of trouble, and now we're, we're back, back on duty. Or if we would have done it, taken him to jail, impounded his vehicle. It would have cost him thousands of dollars by the time he was done. It would have taken me out of the field for at least an hour. We're now in 15 minutes. I'm back ready to rock and roll, and everybody's happy. Okay, so what about everybody going out and getting over-served, which I think is now because of the, you know, some people can go out, you know, and then you see them, they're a little bit over-served. I mean, you see all the videos of people being over-served. Mm-hmm. If, you're in a, if you're in a party, mm-hmm. which I think mostly you can see, it's going to go bad. Right, sure. Somebody gets. If you have two people over served, what can the what should the friends do, or people do? Um, should they? Let's say we're in a party. Someone's acting a little bit crazy, getting a little bit loud. What should? Let's say I'm in that party and I'm not. I know that guy. It maybe potentially might be an issue. Do I try to talk to him myself, or do I go around and maybe talk to the manager and say, hey? You know, we're going to try to get this, trying to get my manager out of here. Manager better be protecting himself. And I've seen now, <clears throat> go, not that I attend bars on a regular basis, but I've been into a few <laughs> bars, and I've seen bartenders, bar owners now, yeah, instruct their bartenders, hey, that guy's had too much, cut him off, no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And they are being very cognizant of it. Parties at a house, you got to be, I got to be Parties cognizant. But, you know, I have a grandson recently turned 22. He had his buddies down the house. And they all had a great time. They had beer. I didn't, I didn't care. I just told them, nobody's going to get drunk here and then think they're going to drive home. I got plenty of floor space. You yeah. know, I, this is, yeah. is going to be it. I'll drive. I'll do this. So they decided they stopped drinking. They had been swimming and everything. They're going to go to another house and continue the party over there. And I got my two grandkids, a 27, 22-year-old, said, hey, you're going to go over there? She says, yeah, Papa, I stopped drinking a long time. I said, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I'll pay for the Uber. Got Uber down here. Drive him down there. I'll pay for it. I don't care. You're not going to be driving tonight. This makes and and I think this Uber has really made things better for drunks. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. E- it's a lot cheaper to pay forty dollars for an Uber. Yeah, than it is to go ahead and pay four thousand dollars for an attorney and a and bail and a fine. Yeah, and and you know, um, there's people that, I mean, the, you know, the beautiful thing about having you in here is you can really ask. The, the questions that I want yeah. the answers to. Yeah, I'll give yeah. you the answers. Can you drive? W- at what point is someone impaired? Like I'm not. I'm not. I've never been. I mean, you know, I'm a notorious, I think, drinker. You know, which is, you know, a, a little. You got you know, your I'm face a, on the can. Come I'm a, I'm a, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a little bit. You know, I made a lot of mistakes drinking. Um, at what point is someone impaired? Like it's not .08. I mean, come on, I probably woke up this morning .09. <laughs> the the law says .08. Whether you are or not, that's what the law says. So .08 get, is, is almost yeah, nothing, though. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that. But if you get in an accident. Let me ask you a question, though, off, to, off topic. 
If you go to church hungover and you go drink some of the wine, is it looked down that God would look at you and say, hey, cabrón, don't try to... Don't try to kill your hangover by you, coming to get communion and taking more wine. Are you Catholic? Because no. it's blood at that point. So no, I, I, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't think so. I think you're, oh, right, yeah, you're good. I would be like, I'm going to go there and get some bread yeah. for my stomach. It's a little yeah. bite, I need a base no layer down there. Yeah. <laughs> Just a wafer or two. But, but point oh eight is the law. It's, it's, yeah. Is that low or is that adequate? I, that's science. That's science. They, they say okay. it is. So if you get involved in it, here's the bottom line. If you're just driving at a .08, you probably, right on the borderline, you probably pass a field sobriety test. I shouldn't say that, but you probably could. It's right there. But if you got in an accident and say you were injured in that accident, they took you to the hospital and they drew blood, and it's going to show .08, you're drunk. Yeah. You know, bottom line, they've, they've, made, a, they've made a limit. There it is. Mm-hmm. And if it's beyond that, you're impaired. And that's we, we can't change that. That's the law. Somebody said that's low. Uh Oh, my man, Jesse. It, 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 That's a low percentage, he's saying? It's the, a low, point away. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, you're blacked out at 0.15, I That's, think. I, I mean, who knows? I, yeah, who knows? I, don't know. I went to you the bar very, right down the street very. from the East L.A. station once I was bagging patrol. And I knew I was going to get blasted. We had a bet going on. And I, so I knew I was going to get blasted. I said, okay, I'm going to do this, but I want you to drive me back to the station. You, Somebody drive my car, drive me back to the station, then just let me sleep there at the station. I wanna, I'm not going to try and drive. When I got to the station, I said, okay, put me on the breathalyzer. I want to see, because I knew I was bombed. How, how am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. it wasn't that high. How many drinks did you have? Oh, shit, I don't remember. I was, I was, but I, <laughs> I, I was, I, I was toasted, trust me. But beer driving is different than margarita driving, than Un- vodka driving. Unfortunately, blood alcohol doesn't say whether you're drinking whiskey, wine, beer. Well, blood alcohol doesn't say, but chingazo is a visa. You know, like, if you're drinking, if you and I are drinking wild turkey and we're fucking kissing at the end and we're like, hey, puto, fucker, kiss me. And then you're like, hey, I'm, I'm all right to drive. And you start the car twice, which I've, you know, when you started the car twice. <laughs> that's a good, that's as good as that's, any. You're, when get it's already on, and you're like, dang. And I, I feel like I get higher on, on wine. I, I get And wine, buzzed. too. Yeah. I feel like I get buzzed on, on wine more than I do Alcohol or, or beer. I, but do anybody? You know, does I drink anybody here? Does anybody throw chingasos drinking wine? Like, you know, <laughs> hey Jim, you've had a little too much Chardonnay. Get your hands off me, <laughs> you pinwa, pino noa <laughs> drinking motherfucker. Oh, I, I don't mean, think people have thrown chingasos <laughs> drinking wine. Like, hey puto, get fucking hold your fucking Zinfandel. I don't think anybody's no, ever no, said no. hold your Zinfandel. <laughs> and about hey, don't invite fucking Grant. That about the can't and, hold this pinot noir. I can't hold my Zin, dude. And, and, all, <laughs> and all those are sissy wine. I just drink Cabernet or Merlot red wine. Yeah, you like drinking wine, huh? Yeah, I do. And and it's it's good for me. It's good for my heart. It's, it's good. got it all. This yeah. motherfucker said point oh eight is the pre-party level. Yeah. <laughs> That's your Sunday afternoon, you, Saturday Yeah, afternoon you got to hit point oh eight by the but, pregame. But um, do people drink all, like yesterday morning on the way to the golf tournament, Cedric's tournament, which was amazing. I was trying to find a place to get a Bloody Mary at 9 o'clock in L.A., which is, you can't get one in any fucking L.A. Why? I don't know. I, to your point, I think golf courses are sort of like the, one of the few places where it's yeah, like when it's place, open, a lot of them can serve. <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's, I that's mean, if you can't get a margarita, yeah. I mean, you can't get a Bloody, Bloody Mary, Mary with yeah. some olives in there. Yeah. Like Those are like little, little, like, little taquitos, you know, like an olive. <laughs> you know, they even sell How big pre-made. they make olives that you could put some fucking carne asada inside one? Yeah. At that point, just give me the carne. It's like, fuck it all. Why am I messing around here? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Alcohol can, can enhance a good time. It can fucking destroy uh, good times, I think. Oh, you know, some bands that, uh, that I've known of that had uh, great accomplishments, but by the end of the night, they had turned into, you know, fights and stuff because, because oh, nobody yeah. knows when to... You know, they say when to say when, but nobody knows when to stop. Like, we're all in love, and then an- another hour, somebody's pushing somebody. You're like, hey, the glass breaks. Once the glass breaks, That's, that, this really pulled a plug I've on never, everything. I've never, uh, the way you see me now is the same way I am when I'm, if I've been drinking extensively. In high school, you were like that, like what I see uh, right always, now? Always laughing, carrying on. I don't change. I've never been in a fight when I'm drunk. I don't yeah. get pissed off when I'm drunk. Uh, if I think uh, you, 
I'll, I'll tell a story on myself. Let's take some questions from the people, but go Let's ahead. Take, I'll see if anybody. No, no, go ahead, but oh, tell a story on yourself. We, we, went, uh, we went on a cruise, and I'm with the wife and some other couples, and, you know, they have those formal dinners. Well, I remember we were out there drinking. I was drinking these, some kind of drink in a special glass. They were souvenir glasses. So I wanted to take a bunch of souvenir glasses back with me. You know, they were, so I'm paying for all the shit. I got ripped. And now it's time for the formal dinner. And my wife Who says. Who invented the fucking souvenir glass? Shit. That motherfucker. Oh, he's, rich. he's rich. Walt Disney. Over there at uh, at uh, California Adventure, I had some fucking Finding Nemo fucking margaritas. That was all about also 38 yeah, ounces. I was Bob, also bucks, drinking probably. these. But I had an armful of them. I'm taking them home with me. I'm all happy. The wife says, you know what? It's time for the dinner. Why don't you just stay here and I'll go to dinner with our, with our friends. You mm -hmm. just stay here and go to sleep. And I say, yeah, but I want to just Gil, please. You've had too much to drink. Just stay here. I said, all right. So she leaves. Do you remember that or not? Oh, yes, yes, okay. I remember that. I don't remember a lot of this. Because I was, I, I thought I'd be a travieso. I was wearing <laughs> white shorts. I had a red shirt. You know the, the Coca-Cola? Coca yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm wearing a muscle shirt that says Come Caca. <laughs> at yeah. the formal dinner, that means eat shit, Eric. <laughs> and and I walk, I walk into the formal dinner. <laughs> I know, Kevin. And my comadre just says, "Comadre," looking at my wife, says, "Comadre, don't look now, but he's back." <laughs> and everybody's in tuxedos and formal wear. And I walk in wearing a Come Caca t-shirt. <laughs> sure. It was someone uh, like hands you a jacket. And, to throw and over so it. the wife says, "Gil," and all I could do was I just hung my head and I said, "I know." I know, bad decision. I know, I know. And she walked me back to the room. Never got angry, never got upset. I just, I know. It was Let a bad decision. Tell you, man. <laughs> if you're married, how long have you been married? 52 years? 50 years. 50 years. Ooh, and, if, and if she doesn't get mad, you found the right, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good thing, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did, you, did she ever get mad at? I mean, she yeah, she's, been, yeah. she, she's been mad at me a few times. But you have to understand. I mean, when, you have when, to understand. When he talks about other ladies on the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear no, about that one. No, she didn't. She didn't. She didn't. That's not what she got. She was. Trust me, she was mad at me for one. <laughs> for about eight months, she was mad at me. For what? Oh no, no, we're not. We're not going to talk about that. Discretion, we can yeah. slide right by that. But what does that but, happen? Has, what did I miss? Was I around at that time? No. No, oh, you were a comedian, but I mean. Yeah, oh. yeah, but this was long. Oh. And I was referencing like the first kiss, I think, conversation. But yeah, you know what? A while back, yeah. Oh shit! Oh, wait a minute. But but uh, listen, Matt. I don't know how dudes think that they can talk about other women, or girls think they can talk about other guys, and that the person that you're with is not going to fucking be upset. Like, can you? I don't know. Does it matter? Yes, know. within reason. Like I get for for me at least something like okay, if you're telling us, you have to you know, be really secure. To yeah, which is the hardest part. I think most people. I screwed aren't. up recently yeah. that uh, on here on your show. Listen, Matt, you don't have to say it. Like don't don't feel like you need to. No, no, no. I, I screwed up here here. on your show no, when I talked about seeing to... that old that old girl where I said something, and <laughs> and she got pissed off at me. That's the only time. Kill. She's we cut ever... this part all out. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead and you tell know, me she, again. Yeah, I didn't, yeah I let me know. We can... She wasn't, you know, she was upset that I had really said something, and I didn't think anything of it. But it didn't It didn't last an angry match. She was just pissing me. I'd said it. I'd seen a girl that I'd kissed in third grade. The, the first girl I'd ever kissed. And I said, hey. What I, year was that? I mean. I still remember that kiss. I mean. And my wife got pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, I was in third grade. Third grade. Yeah. She yeah. got to have to be the 1950. Shit, you know, I, what year was I, that? I, I mean, was born in 49. Grade. Okay, been married so for 54. Oh, okay, <laughs> so probably about 1957. That's when it happened. Spill the beans. Somebody said spill the beans. <laughs> and I hadn't, I have he not a great kissed her. The There's been thing. nothing since. But the fact that I brought it up in front of her, she, she, she was not happy. So I have Well, there's to be no statute of limitations on no, there is first kiss. I don't, you, no. In terms of like getting some mileage out of the story, like you should be able to tell that whenever. Is that what you're saying? I'm, it's I'm like saying a, that you should be able to tell a story, you know, ad nauseum. I don't even know what that means. That that would work. I don't know what that, that means. means. I don't on know what the that other means. hand, what, what does ad nauseum mean? Ad nauseum basically means over and over until people oh, over get sick and over. of it. Oh, ad nauseum yeah. then. Because <laughs> it's been so long yeah. that you're like, okay, I didn't know you. You were, I mean, you guys aren't the same age, right? She was younger. No, you guys are the same age. So she, she was in third she's grade. She's a little older. She's a little older than I am. So, Ooh, were you supposed to say that? That, <laughs> that one's not good at the home office either. So, so the difference between go. us, you and go. you talk about being secure. If I was your partner, I'd take the keys right now, throw them in the fucking trunk. <laughs> <laughs> 
see at Winchell's. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I take your pot saying, hey, let's go to okay. Winchell's and let's get you some coffee. Now, see, you, you talk about <laughs> being secure. Now, see, my wife, when we broke up, you know, when I was a kid, went in the Army, and then she, was, I was gone, and she'd go back with her ex-boyfriend and went back and forth. Okay, well, he actually asked her to marry him, which she didn't accept. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they were an item. So... Let us say within the last 10 years, he passed away. And my wife still keeps in touch with her cousin, that are commodities, and the guy's still in the world. He passed away, and she was telling me how she felt bad that he passed away. And I told her, hey, you want to go to the funeral? Go to the funeral. It's not going to upset me because, you know, yeah. go. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But just remember, you I dumped like him <laughs> for me. Maybe his family ain't going to be too happy to see you there. That's true. So this is something you got to think about. You know, I, I don't, if you, you want to go, go. That's very true. Yeah. And, no, but Grant, it, did, it doesn't bother no, totally me. Agree. Grant, you want to operate this and see? Yeah, what we You got. can answer some questions if the people, it's live. We're live, man. Right. But you're going to have to put it on us the whole time. Uh, let's still have another beer. There you go. Got more. But <clears throat> years ago, years ago, when I was at the Ice House, I said to uh, when I was married, I said I ran into my old girlfriend at the ice house, and that became an issue. But she just happened to be there, and I ran into her. Like you know, I would I didn't invite her, but you know that one you know that didn't yeah. wasn't received very well. Old girlfriend, although yeah. I was married. Did you end up interacting? Did you just yeah. like make make a comment? Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we know how to interact. Okay, all we know how to interact. Give me that fucking thing. I don't like the way you. I don't like the way you, you're putting me up. All right, what so, so no, no, so no. But yeah, I, I no, nothing was received very well. Yeah. So we just kind of stay away from that. I've right? never been. I've never. I've never. Uh, unfortunately. What is it like to have a partner that's understanding? Is it? Is it? Do you have? Uh, don't ask me. No. <laughs> For the most part, you, you know, I I, I got to believe there's got to be some trust there. You, you know, what, there's got to be trust. I mean, mm -hmm. what, are they, what are they? In, what where do the insecurities come from? Do the insecurities insecurities don't come from when you just meet that person? You're having from when you're a fucking childhood. Your yeah. own observations. Exactly. When I met her, I was playing in the band. And even ugly guys get their underwear, uh, women's underwear thrown at them. You know, they, they all want to be groupies. And so that's how I met my wife. What is it about music, eh, that makes women, and even dudes, like, get their palitos hard? Like, I, hey, you know, I've, I've been to some concerts where, Frit. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It just, <laughs> it, it takes but, I mean, out it's, of everything it's else. music, right? It's yeah. like, and, and the way to become a good musician is not attractive at all, you know, Sit in your room you're in and your practice. You're in your fucking garage. Mm -hmm. You're in your room somewhere and practicing over and over and over again, you know? So here it is. I meet her. We get married. The Midnighters, yes. Now, late 70s, I'm working gangs at East L.A., and I have to sit on a surveillance on a gang murder one night. And I catch up with her and the rest of my buddies from the band. They're having a little mini reunion at a house. And the lead singer on the band is sitting there saying, Hey, Gil. So, uh, you know, we just lost our sax player. We're doing nightclubs right now. Why don't you go, why don't you play with us? Were you married at that time? Yes. And my wife. married forever, though. Huh? No, you were married. You were, 20, you were 21. Yeah, that's I was 21 bad. when I got married. For Chicano, that's already a, that's... you're already a fucking spinster at that age. <laughs> so, so, you know, I you got some great. It, it's sounding good to me, you know, start <laughs> playing. And, and the first thing the wife said was, oh, no, mm -hmm. bullshit. You're not going out there and doing that again. Because she remembered what it was like yeah. when I was playing. You what know? was it like? Oh, it was it was fun. It, it was fun. Like I said, even ugly fat guys. Well, had, a, lot, you know. a lot of undies getting tossed on yeah, stage. So, <laughs> so she didn't want me to do that. Now, years later, the band's getting together, and they're going to do a reunion. And she's saying, "Go ahead." You know, it's like you're old. You know, <laughs> you know it, it, it's it's yeah, over yeah. with now. How many years have gone by? Uh, shit, since I was uh, back then, I was probably about twenty five when. Uh, they hit me up to go start playing with them again, and now I'm in my 50s, you know, early 60s. And okay. So she sent. All right. Go ahead. So she thinks the step, you know, she thinks yeah. that does. There's no way that this music <laughs> <He's> <laughs> can, can affect women at 50 the way it did when they were, and you were in the 20s. Well, not, not only that, she, I'm sure she threw in there. 
I'm a little more mature. I have responsibilities. Oh. You know, I oh. have I have family, I have kids, I have a house, and you're not going to throw it all the way just to go have fun. And, and she's going to be going out when I play. She's going to go out with me all the time anyway. <laughs> but does it sound like ultimately she trusted you more or just did the math and was like, well, he's got too much to lose. It's probably not going to happen. I, I, I think it was a combination. <laughs> she, she trusted me more, the math. And what can you really do, old man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are you yeah. going to attract? <laughs> she had confidence in the there's product. There's some old dudes that still can throw palo. Not me, but I mean, there's some. I hope to shout. <laughs> huh? I don't know. I hope to shout, brother. <laughs> I'm 71. So, so how <laughs> how was it back? So what was it like? Do you still love the music? I still love the music. And and we're all, all older viejas there. Well, oh yeah, th- there were and you know, there were there were people there. But I mean, I had my wife. Now when I go out and play, I do these reunion things. I got my wife. I got my kids out there. The you know, we played at my we played at my seventieth birthday party. Put the band together at Stephen Steakhouse. We got up there <laughs> yeah, and played. Yeah, and, 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 and you love Stephen. This is I, this place is a great you know ad for we're Stephen gonna, Steakhouse. We're gonna we're gonna go to Stephen Steakhouse and do the anniversary show. Oh yeah, at oh, Stephen that'd be, Steakhouse that'd be a during the day, so we can get all bubbles right there, that, and then let be, me loose on the five. Right there, there you I'll go. Fucking go to Alpine Village. I forget all of bubbles. <laughs> Alpine Village. You ever been to Alpine Village? Uh, I've been by it, never been to it. <laughs> I just passed it. I thought it wasn't even around anymore. No, it, it's, it's off the uh, off the harbor, off the harbor freeway. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna have the. We should probably call it Alpine Village. We should probably have the anniversary show at Alpine Village. <laughs> and Stevens, it's a whole yeah. make a day out of it. When's the anniversary show? That's actually a good question. It could be tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. What's at the Monday. anniversary of? You know, that's, anniversary of what? there's all things going on. It have to be in, until all right. Like so February, there's a lot of people the on on uh, Instagram Live. Um, here's a question, just open ended. Like, all right, would you would would anybody who was married in a band or married in a profession would you still be as excited to do your job if you had to take your spouse with you 100 percent of the time? Most definitely. I really would. I'm going to say fucking no way. I would say, uh, yeah. I, I, rather, I, I, I don't care I would, because... I'd rather have my tongue pulled out of my culo mm-hmm. than take <laughs> and with me to all those shows. <laughs> if they pull Which your is, tongue out of your culo, <laughs> they pull a beef stick with it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Also much easier to pull that off hey, if you don't have the wife and kids. Let me tell you something. Don't make complain about the scent of my culo back there <laughs> on at my... Uh, liquor store yeah. job on Pure Blossom <laughs> Highway, whatever fuck I see. I'm, I'm not worried anymore about my wife going with me because I'm not doing anything. I, I love playing. I love playing. I love playing for my wife. You know, if she's there listening and she likes it, I love it. Uh, I want her around me. And then it's just easy. I got nothing to hide, nothing there. She loves me. We still dance. Matter of fact, somebody posted something. I did. I, I saw that. I, oh, wait, you posted? I saw something I, very I, sweet on your Instagram. Oh, yeah. man. Where was that at? That was... Uh, but, you know, you're one of those those few vatos that's like married 50 years and still loves... You guys are still in love. Great partners. You have fun together. You go out as a family. That's... It's yeah. very anti-fucking Latino. Yeah. Very un-Chicano. <laughs> <laughs> it's very un-Chicano. Yeah. You never see a Chicano go, hey, kids, come on, let's go to this party. That they're having yeah. in my honor. Be like, I don't want my fucking kids there. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was great. It was fun, and, and it was, it was a little tough. It was a little misty eyed because I haven't danced with her in a while because of this getting dizzy and shit. Uh, so I just they were playing uh, Sabor a Mi, and it's a beautiful song. And so I told her, I said, Hey, you want to dance? She said, Are you serious? I said, Yes. It was I'm beautiful. Serious. I'm gonna say. And, and so we got up and danced, and we, and we both had tears in our eyes. First time we had danced in a while. And the fact that I was dancing, it was a beautiful song. It was nice. Uh, she was afraid, you know, at one There's time. There's some pretty good comments here, too. Everybody needs a healthy space. I like that. I, I, I like that idea of it. But for for you, it was very, you know, I'm going to say, I don't, I'm not sure that the way that I was raised, I was going to be a good partner for life, you know, unfortunately. Like, those things are... Those things are etched kind of in a young person. Yeah. But to see you and your wife dancing, I reposted that thing because I thought it was beautiful. I mean, I admire you. I mean, I really do. I admire you guys. I've been around you guys, you know. And seeing the documentary, I saw you and then I saw I saw uh, her. And then I thought, well, I'm going to meet her. But I felt like I already kind of knew her. And that's what she said when she came up to me. Like, <sighs> By when the way, she said to tell you, you know, it's like your familia. When I was leaving, she says, hey, don't forget, tell Georgia I said hi. Yeah, I think she's a beautiful <laughs> person, man. I mean, just in seeing her and seeing her on the documentary, which I watched like, you know, almost like 
if I like something, I watch it like five times in a row yeah. because I, you know, you know, I'm I'm Mr. Crime, but I inherit that stuff in me. Like you know, I I see that stuff. I'm not sure where I, I might have been a lot smarter. I don't know when documentaries started, but in my in the '70s, you couldn't see a fucking documentary anywhere. Well, yeah. well, National Geographic. Yes, I mean certainly not like in like, today see, where you can go National to every National Geographic. Nature, I, just, you know. I just used to watch it for the women, for the natives. <laughs> but you know, but watching, then the, watching that geo for the hotties. Yeah, but then what do they have? Uh, Mutual of Omaha, Wild Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But yep. you couldn't see a, an actual documentary on, on something. No. No. It was beautiful. No, no, they're everywhere. Even like podcasts, well too. There's I just saw, my, my daughter just sent me some, some other thing. Uh, Netflix just put it out. Top 10 uh, shows on Netflix for the first six months of the year. Oh, yeah. And we were number five. Oh, hell yeah. We are right in the middle. So uh, that's... Uh, that's pretty good. Not not what on my four. Grant, look up the yeah, other four. Yeah, let's grab it. They're probably, what else could they be? What's hot over there? Bridgerton. Yeah, that Bridgerton. Bridgerton played a lot longer than mine did, and they were just right before me, either right in front of me or right after me. But but, do you ever get over? I don't know, man. Well, not for you, but let's say for the people watching on Instagram. Do you get? Do you ever get over like your first love, like the? Maybe someone that you didn't end up with? Yeah, that girl that I kissed in the third grade. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, she did. Fucking doghouse coaching. See, no, I'm just left. No. <laughs> He's uh, saying he got over that. He's saying it's not. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my daughter one time, uh, my middle daughter, she was asking me, and she had to be about 10 years old, 12 years old. She says, Dad, how, long do, how old do I have to be before I start dating? And I said, get out of here. She said, no, really, Dad, how old do, you, do I have to be before I start dating? I said, okay, 35 or when you get out of the convent, whichever comes first. <laughs> and then she says, Dad, dude. She says, I bet you mom was the first girl you ever kissed. You were a nerd. And she started laughing. And but were you a nerd? You weren't. No. No, you're no. a Chicano. Eh? Yeah. But didn't, <laughs> didn't being a Chicano help you as a police officer, though? Yeah, well, most definitely. Like those guys felt. Exactly. But that wasn't a, that wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a skill you had. When those guys said... Hey, Carrillo's like, he's a good he's dude. Firme. You when when they said you were firme, that wasn't an act. You no, you just happened to be a Chicano that ended up being a police officer. That's right, a sheriff or a detective. That's right. Yeah, like some of those vatos try to be like. I don't think you can be pretend to be cool. I mean, probably, maybe, but those guys would pick it up. Like the fucking street dudes, they're smart. Huh? They are. There was a guy uh, that grew up on the same block I did, and he became a he became a cop about three months before I did. And as soon as he found out that I had passed everything I was going in, he, he came up to me and said, okay, first thing you got to do is forget everybody here on the block, forget wow. everything about the neighborhood. And because it's a different world now. And I went in and I kept telling myself, you can't forget all everything that you've done, everywhere you've been. And so I became one, graduated, I'm a work cop now. I'd go back on the block and I'd have a beer with the guys. There was nothing. And then they finally copped out. They said, you know what? You come around here. We love you, brother. You were part of us. You're still one of us. You'll always be part of us. He said, the other guy, so he comes around here, we'll fuck him up. We don't like him. He thinks he's too good. He's a piece of what? shit. You know, he just, and he was darker than I was. But they didn't like him. And they could just tell that the dude wasn't a good dude. Sure. Which I think, you know, they know. But street cred goes a, it goes a long way. I mean, I don't know now, you know, um, but you know, because everybody kind of moves into different different um, neighborhoods. But when you got street in you, you have street in you the whole time. Sure. You know, when I bought when I bought the house that I live in now, the neighbor was bitching because you know the trees were in my in my on my side of the property and the guys that live there it's a fucking expensive to cut trees like trim trees yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why nobody yes. ever trims them i don't mm -hmm. know what the, how the fuck that it got to be a thousand dollars to have somebody come and trim palm trees which if you look around none of them are done or, or in homes even so this yeah. guy so this guy's telling me you know 17 years these guys lived in the house that i bought they never trimmed the trees it got all congested and then the pollen and if with blue that shit blew into your house oh it does so I said, I'm going to trim these trees. And the guy's like, I think we should trim these trees like 30%. I'm like, no, fuck that, man. We trim them like fucking 60%. Let's see. Damn. They look bare. And the neighbor, you know, lived in Canada and he lived here and he comes back and he he's, you know, the office calls. They're like, hey, your neighbor's upset. I said, about what? 
about the trees. And I said, what about them? That you trimmed them and you didn't let them know. I said, they're on my fucking yard. How am I going to let this guy know yeah. that I'm going to trim the trees that are in my yard? Yeah. And he goes, he wants to come over and talk to you. I said, I said, tell that dude not to come over. Do not do that. They're cut yeah. already. What am I going to do? Glue them back on? This fucking dude comes over and he says, and you know, whenever... Everybody has a trigger. You know, what do you say when you're pissed off and you know it's about the shit's about to go down? I say, can I help you? That's what, that's what I say when chingasos are about to go down. Can I help you? This guy's like, yeah, I'm a little disappointed in you. And, and what? That you trim the trees without, you know, asking me. And I said, well, why would I ask you? Well, you know, my privacy... You know, I said, what well, fuck your privacy? Mm -hmm. well, like I said, you know. My tree. <laughs> said, it's my tree. And he's like, well, you know, you didn't, those guys came into my yard, which they didn't. And then I said, no, they didn't. They, you know, how they do it now, they grab it with a rope and they pull sure. it so they yeah. don't go in the yard. And this guy was convinced that they had gone into his yard. I'm like, man, they didn't. And he's like, well, I think they did. I'm like, man, I'm not going to debate, you know, these trees with you. They're in my yard. Yeah. You can get an attorney. You could do it that way. But I'm not going to stand here and talk to you about some shit that's already done. And he says, oh, is that right? And I said, yeah, that's right. And I don't, I haven't thrown chingasos since fucking like ninth grade. And I said, just, you know, if I were you, I'd probably go home, you know. It might be easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then. Um, and now you guys are best friends? He first? put up some ficus. <laughs> Fuck him. No, no, I'll talk to him. Yeah. And he put up some ficus. Ficus to block you out? And I pulled a, pulled a gun on him. <laughs> In my balcony, nobody saw it. Just me. <laughs> Just like Tony Montana, all crazy, waving a gun around in the afternoon on a Sunday Hello. afternoon. But off, I mean, neighbor disputes are they're they're big. They they're become big, they, they're real, they become like, deadly. Yeah. Oh yeah, what does it say? Tall tall fences make good neighbors. Like. Living, Give us his living address. Your people's let, us here. let us know his <laughs> <laughs> You know, the one thing about Instagram, there's a lot of things bad about it, but I love the people that follow you now. You know, I, I, I told them to follow you. But they really, man... I think they would be people that if you said, hey, I need 10 dudes at 7 o'clock to meet me in Griffith Park, I think there'd be 25 oh, dudes. Oh, yeah. I think no. there would be. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think oh, yeah. would be. There, there's some... Ex-military... I bet you look right now, they're going, yes, that's me. Chingasos, I'm there. <laughs> just, just give me the address. Chingasso adjacent. <laughs> yeah. So as... as um, here's something I've never told anybody All right. at my age, because already we're about to those ass game. In seeing your video... <laughs> You know, I'm 60, right? And I don't think that <clears throat> that I want to end up uh, alone. Like my therapist told me I would be 10 years ago. He was correct. But I think I, I, think I want to try to, you know, find somebody to be with. Hopefully he's a tender gentleman. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, <laughs> so I was, I'm fluid. Find, find your own dating game killer. I'm fluid up, but I'm this fluid, right? I don't know what fluid is, but I'm this fluid. That's but I, I don't want to, I, I don't, Aaron, you have somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck it, too late. So, <laughs> no, but I think, I think. Never uh, too late. And seeing that video and seeing things in life, it's going by fast, man. I, oh, I don't think is. I want to be, I don't think I want to be alone the rest of my life. Or just with my golf clubs. I mean, no. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, it's a little bit sad. It gets a little sad. You on any of the apps? I think we, we talked a little bit about, about Raya <laughs> the other day, right? Uh, or or no comment. I'm on Raya. Or maybe we're on. Or the... some, you know, there's some putitas out there. I mean, putitas. I don't mean like young. I mean putitas in their fifties. Mm. Good ladies. <laughs> yeah. There's good ladies in their fifties, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Good Look, ladies. People are all torn up by life. That, like if you go, hey, let's go listen to some jazz. They're like, oh, I'm not gonna. Do, I know what that means. Like they're so beat down by life that. <laughs> listen to jazz. Is you want to go listen to jazz? Is your euphemism? Not in your life, cochino. <laughs> like they think it, it all means something else. Like rusty trombone. Like that. <laughs> 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 all right, we put it on Instagram live. Urban, urban no. Dictionary. That Yo, say the, goodbye uh, to all the people. We got a lot of new, new hey, listeners. Hey, see you later. Thank you for listening. Thank How you for they, joining. How do they follow you? At Real Gil Carrillo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're bringing Bobby Lee back. Oh, yeah. We'll get him back on the podcast. Uh, and, uh, he's on yeah, Tiger right. Belly. Follow Thank him. you, everybody, for uh, hanging out with us. And we'll see you again. We'll do it again. Bueno, here. You know how to end it? Uh, did you? Uh, yeah. and save it? I, don't I should know how to. That was fun, though, huh? Hey, how do, how do I end it and save it? <laughs> how does he end it and save it? People on Instagram. How do we end I this? I still don't know how to and use that save shit. It. I don't know how to use that shit.
What sure. phone do you have? You use your iPad phone, on. Phone. I use my iPhone and my. Have you done more Clubhouse? Uh, no, no. What else do we do? Did we like Clubhouse? What else did we like? Because Clubhouse. Oh, the other one was. Uh, do we share it to IGTV? Is that what you wanted? Yeah. All right. What was the one? Um, uh, that was video. What, which one were we talking about? Twitch was on. Oh, that Twitch. That yeah. Austin was on. Yeah. Austin was on. Great. I didn't see it. You Sorry. know, I, I've gone on Twitch, but I still don't really don't understand that one. You know, I see a bunch of stuff on there. I just. I've gone what do we tell it. Austin we're going to do on Twitch? Like a we're going to have a what? no. We're going to have a uh, band, uh, a contest, uh, oh, yeah. a talent show. Is that talent, what you said? Talent yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's posting right now. That was the the, the Instagram Q and A within a show. Well, malas palabras, man. We're we're getting we're close to uh, signing some people. That's the uh, the music label, right? Yeah. Awesome. Can we hear for that episode or the? No. Okay. So you we're uh, put you just yeah, we're launched. We're gonna put the... Gil on Malas as as because uh, he, he was in a band. Yeah, your sax guy is that what I heard? Yeah, oh. yeah. I'm gonna cut him in on my. Uh, we have a label. Me and the singer Andy Vargas from Santana, and we're in the process of signing a couple of uh, of young artists, man. Good. I've got the guys looking for. I just got a call from my bass guitar player a couple of weeks ago, and he's looking now. Evidently, they have a DVD. That I didn't get a copy of. They have they have a copy on on DVD of me blowing that uh, well, Harlem Nocturne, that song. Yeah, where at a fire department would have closed down. We were at a big uh, nightclub, and it was a grand opening. You know, they're having a big deal, so they had uh, three bands that I used to play together back in the '60s, and uh, we did it, and you it was packed. And you could hear them screaming. You could hear them. Uh, it, it was loud. It was good. And it's that Harlem Nocturne saxophone solo that I used to play. You know what? Uh, Killer. Mm-hmm. You couldn't play the national anthem on your sax, could you? Well, you can play anything on it. You Once know, you but I, it. I never did play it. Yeah. The um, September 11th, I think we're taking a field trip. We're going to go to Staples and we're going to see uh, De La Hoya fight. Oh yeah. You want to go? Yeah, yeah. Want to bring? Sure. Want to bring Perla? Well. Nah, probably not, not, not to the fight. You know, Pro used to go with me because I told you I used to be a ring announcer. But before that, oh, yeah. I'd go to the fights. I'd go to the Olympic Auditorium almost every week. So I'll fucking Olympic Auditorium. And she Amazing. was, she was sitting there saying, you know, hey, well, how come I never get to go with you? You know, because you know I've seen women down there. And I said, it, it's a different. <laughs> you, you don't understand, dear. They bring the other. So I, I just told her. I said, okay, you can go with us. I said, but chivalry's dead I that, that shit. night. I love that shit. Mm-hmm. I see women down there. Yeah. Because it is a, it's a bit of a... Yeah, chivalry's dead. There would be like a, a row of five sucias. You know, they'd get up. That's they true. were all blah, 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 They'd get up. Everybody would whistle. They'd cheer. You know, just... They're like strippers. They'd get up and they'd go up there and come down. So she wanted to go. So I said, okay, chivalry's dead that night. Don't ask me to it, protect it, yeah. you. It, this is a fight. It's so, a real thing. It's a fight. Yeah. So we got down there. And the one thing about the Olympic, if the fights are no good on the inside, some drunk would get fighting behind you. Right. So here comes the <laughs> fights, and the guy falls down in front of me. And she's, come on, let's go. Let's get. And I said, no, no, no. You said you want to be here. Let's go. You know, we just, all I did was push him back up. Go ahead, finish your chingasles. Some guy got, I'm never forget it, from the balcony. Got a beer and threw it down on the LAPD cop, right oh, on him. And the guy dude. just looked up and he says, "Oh, why did you waste that beer?" But didn't go up charging after him. No. Didn't do anything. Let it go. When it's and when you to say let... up, it's really not. It wasn't that big, far up. Huh? No, because it was very intimate. Uh, it was a great. They still out. It's still out there, Gil. Yeah, but it's it's a church now. They sold to a, a church. If anybody's if anybody's out there, it's funny because I was just talking about this. If anybody's out there, that's that. Is in LA that has access to what would have been the Olympic Auditorium. The Olympic Auditorium. I would love to go in there and be able to take a tour of it. Right? Yeah. If it's yeah. if it if it resembles like with the locker rooms. I've there. been in the locker rooms because I, I did ring announcing and, there and, and it was it was awesome. How big a place was it? Because to me small. The locker room was very it a thousand, disappointing. Was it a thousand? Oh yeah. They, they, you could fit, I'm sure, a few couple of thousand, maybe about five thousand. Maybe 4,000. It, it was it small. Like. Small on the inside, and then the arena. Because they used it, I believe, as an Olympic venue for uh, ah, back in the I day. I think they did, yeah. yeah. Is, this the one, is this the one downtown? Yes. Gr- Grand yes. Avenue? Grand yeah. Avenue. Yeah. 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 I would almost, listen, I don't know what shape it's in, but I would almost do my last special 
at the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah, oh, it, that's it, it was cool. special. So I don't know if those seats are still there or whatever, but we took her down, and as we were leaving the arena that night, the LAPD were lined up waiting for this guy through the beer. Oh shit! And he came out, and the cop just went up and says, "Hey, remember me?" And they beat his ass. Wow. As he's so just. They knew who that dude was. They knew who he was. And, and they knew what they waited for. And they beat the and shit. And he just came out like, hey. Took him to jail. He was drunk. And they, they did what they had to do, you know. But that place, like, you know, almost like the old the old arenas in, in, in towns. Like, you know, Boston Guard's not around anymore. <clears throat> but from the Olympic, when you stepped outside, you were on a sidewalk. You weren't on... Uh, in an area where you could walk to your car. Yeah. You came out of the Olympic, remember all those doors had like yeah. four doors on each side. And when you when they opened the door, you were on a sidewalk, you were in the street. That's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, fucking no frills, great architecture on the outside. And then the box office tickets, th- th- those little the little sconces on the outside were like, you know, just all the way around it. I went to a fight, uh, Loma Lee versus Ruben Navarro. Ruben Navarro knew, was from I'm, East L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fans were chanting, Ruben, Ruben. And over on this side, all the Mexicans were saying, Loma Lee, Loma Lee. And I was with my dad. My dad was there. Wow, and man. all of a sudden, the fight broke out up in the stand. Beers were flying. And I watched my dad grab the rail and jump over the rail to get out. You know, it, it, it scared the shit out of everybody. And I thought, oh, this is, this is not good. But we got out, and they broke up the fight eventually. We got on time, but it was, it was How did you become a, a, a ring announcer? That's that's. A, I started that with the department. They asked me to do it at the local fights. You know, hey, Gil, you'll get up there, would you? And just fights between deputies, you grudge know, matches. They used to be able to do. They used to be able to do that, right? Yeah. They used to be able to have fights between deputies. Yeah, yeah they had grudge matches. You get up there, and they did it. And, and I, he'd have and his I ring did. guys, and then the yeah, other guy and, would have his guys. They were fucking detect. They were yeah, deputies going yeah, at it. Deputies Wrong. going at, and then it, it it grew from that. I enjoyed it. And I guess I did it decently to the when they had interdepartmental LAPD versus the sheriff's department, and I started doing those. Then it became the police Olympics, shit, and started doing I remember that. the police Olympics. And then yeah. I got a couple of pro flights, you know, but to do it in the pros, you know, they've got their people. The California Athletic, you know, the boxing commission, they know who they're gonna yeah, do. Sure. So unless you get into them, uh, you think that would work now? Some palms. The ring announcing or what? No, no, fights between like NYPD versus LAPD. Yeah, they still do it. Oh, do they? Because oh, I was, I was totally going to say, no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you go to that? Oh, well, that's so yeah, I, they still do it. I think a lot of people who don't like cops would go to that too. Like just get to see cops beat each other up. It was a great night. I think they would, I LAPD, think... the fire department would get involved in it. Um, they used to have fights between the cops and the Marines down in Pendleton. It's all good sport, you, and all you want to make sure. It's all in sport. No, yeah, no, they, 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 you want to make sure. Like someone will get sued. You know, or something. some some of these guys would get up there and they'd start. You know, and the referees would stop the fight. Or, and I challenge all of them. Hey, hey, you don't like it? Suit up, get in the ring. Right. You know, we hear these guys have real jobs. They have to go back to work tomorrow. You yeah, know, you don't want anybody to get hurt. You don't want anybody seriously hurt. Yeah, that's badass though. Once you get uh, people you, together like that, they're out for blood. Once once you just get that big a crowd, and it's right, like, what else are we doing? Fight. Uh, you guys want to do voicemails? Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. Let's, you, you uh, we have time. Oh yeah, we got. Time. I was fun. I wasn't. Oh. I, I liked it. Yeah, throw on uh, throw on the headphones so we can uh, hear the goods. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna... Yeah, George gotta slap those bad boys on. There's a lot of cochinas out there. God bless those cochinas. I think, you know, God bless cochinas. All right, you guys ready? Some ready. All right, first one off the top. Uh, we got some good questions in the realm of love, so here we go. Hey, what's up, George, Gil, and Grant, Triple G's. My name's Sebastian. <laughs> I'm from Baldwin Park, but now I live in Utah where these Mormon putos have like six wives, you know? But I just wanted to know how would you guys feel about having more than one wife? Can a Pepino handle all of that ass or what? Let me know. There's dudes that have double families, though. Let's not, let's not yeah, try to pretend. Not, not, not the same as double families. Double wives, I can only handle what I've got. I don't want any more. That's good enough for me. It takes up most of my time. And the other time that I'm not with her, then I'm with my friends. So it's all good. You do have yeah. a nice balance of, uh, you still go to the WVF on I'm going to the VFW as soon as I leave here today. Straight down. We got to go over there one time. Hell yeah. Check what do they do? What do you guys do over there? Can we crash? Sit around and drink. 
and I'll stay there for okay. maybe maybe two hours max. Oh wow! So it, and then and it's about ten minutes away from home, so it's easy. Where is it from? City of Industry, uh, sixty Hacienda. You, you know where uh, oh, Pacific. Oh. Uh, the hotel yeah, big, is big, big golf course up there. The hotel. Yeah, yeah. We shot, we shot uh, the comedy get down TV show there. Okay, well, place. they've got uh, just maybe a mile or two from there, mm. right off the sixty freeway. It's a great place. You'll see a bunch of old guys in there, just drinking, talking about it. I love that area. I mean, I like that place. Yeah, just, there. just a, uh, just bullshit about old days and what we did in the in the armed forces or yeah. what we're doing now. Laughing. Those guys golf or they're they're all too old. I don't know. They, they, no, no. Some of them golf. I'm sure. I that just place, don't golf. Yeah, that place is. You don't golf, huh? No. Ah, okay. No, I have I have golf clubs in my garage, but I don't golf. Not yet. I feel like you don't know how to play. George is you looking don't know at how, you right or, or you, like, you don't want to make a golf. Well, I, I just I I, I let's go play I, one I, day I, over there at that at that course. I'll go over there and stay overnight over at that hotel. I, I love that place. You'll let, you'll end up laughing at me more, and I laugh at you. Watch me. <laughs> but it's fun though. It's fun though. Those those courts aren't easy too, by the way. The ones at Sydney at, at that place. The only thing I did at that course, I sat out of one of the holes. It was the the hole of the tournament. We were having a homicide convention there, so it was closest to the pin. And my job was to sit in the golf course, drink, and see who got closest to the pin. That's all I did that day. <laughs> a little measuring tape. Yeah, that's great. Well, I mean, so we, so what was the answer to the guy's question? No, I can't get one, much less two. I mean, yeah. I yeah. just. It's crazy. Have you been around, and I, I see more of these in Hollywood with time, have you been around anyone with like an open relationship or doing polyamory or anything What's like that? that? What's polyamory? Polyamory just means you're allowed, you know, as opposed to monogamy, which is like one, poly is multiple, so you're allowed to be with multiple people. I remember the movie Pollyanna. I don't think... It's close. I don't... I think you have to be young to be in a poly, but where you, where you don't... Where you can be with like three different people. I can only devote to one right now. That's enough. <laughs> like, yeah, we're no, older. I but I think it's... And when people are young, they... You know, right? Yeah. They, like, I, I, I don't have the programming for it. It's certainly not in my DNA. But, no. like, I'm, I'm more or less of the belief. It's like, look, if you're in a relationship and you two agree upon something, you know... Sure. Go nuts. That's what I said about that lady that called in to ask her if she was a puta. <laughs> and she, she, I, she wasn't a puta. She's the most beautiful person th of this year. That's right. And, and Wait till the people comes out with that beautiful people of the year. I'm up to throw her fucking <laughs> name in the, the PI too. And, not, and we don't have to do details, but uh, you, were, you were saying before the podcast that she reached out to you. We she got actually did reach out to me. God bless her. She said that she laughed. Uh, first off, she didn't think it would air. Secondly, she really enjoyed my laughter when I was laughing at her yeah. about it. But we were very easy on her. She understood. And in fact, she broke it to her uh, husband. This is a real deal. Yeah. She ended up breaking it to her husband. He wasn't too happy about it, but they're talking about it. So there's something going on. She thought that uh, George and myself were her surrogate deals. You know, we're her uncles. Yeah. So the, and real world effects to this stuff, guys. <laughs> and uh, what what was the, uh, the latest that she said that the dude was in? Allegedly, kind of into it, right? Yeah. Well, she said they're they're discussing it. They're into discussion. So, let's see what happens. Maybe she'll after hearing this. Maybe she'll write me back some more, or I'll write back, write her back. And yeah, I I for one want to hear as much of this saga as possible, yeah. so we can you know anonymize it. But uh, you know, kind woman in the audience, please keep writing. I would love to stay. Please keep out sending us videos. Right, right. right no, no I messages. Can, I'll, I'll reach out to her and see if we can't talk about it openly. You know, because I don't want to burn her. I don't want. Yeah. No. Absolutely. We want to respect that too. She trusts me right now. <laughs> <laughs> She'll right. trust you all the time. You're a trustworthy person. Now, me, on the other hand, all right, what, which other one? All right, uh, we got a little What's more. What's the number two? 818. 818. I think uh, Aaron's going to throw it up on the screen. We got 818-533-1843. So you leave a voicemail for There's any of you guys out there that want to be in my, in my life? <laughs> you know, we, leave a voicemail. We've yet, we've yet to get any of those. Do we like really solicit? No, nah, nobody. So yeah, nobody wants. Actually, no, no. I take that back. We have gotten some. Some folks are like, "Oh, here's hey George, here's my number." I haven't passed those along. I can start if you'd like. <laughs> All right, we got more. Uh, let's pass them along. Let, let's give them to uh, to Gil and see what Gil picks for me. <laughs> All right, we got uh, some more questions. Here we go. Yeah, George, and my name is Ricky, and my lady man she likes me to um have sex with her with my ski mask on. And then, um, you know, we enjoy it. But lately, she's been putting her index finger on my culo, and I'm starting to like it. What do you think about me? What do you think? What's going on I with think me? I think you're a beautiful lady. Hey, let me know. 
<laughs> so sort of a two-parter there. Yeah, you were saying, George? It's a two-parter. I was a first. It's a sort of a two-parter. What's the first part? <laughs> well, Run it again. <laughs> Yeah, Where we lose you? Uh, you know, have we lost you? The first part. All right. Well, we'll hear this one from the top. Oh, no. It took a change in direction. I, I didn't expect that to be coming down the pike. Fierro's in there. All right. My name is Ricky, and my lady, man, she likes me to um, have sex with her with my ski mask on. That, that's and then, ski, um, mask. ski mask. We enjoy it, but lately, she's been putting her index finger on my culo and I'm starting to like it. What do you think about me? What you think? What's going on with me? I'm getting sugar in the tank. Let me know. Sugar in the tank. Yeah, he, he asked, am I getting sugar in the tank? Is that like, is that supposed to be I like actually, a gay do, I actually, It is. For okay. A, a very Latino. I, okay. I, I thought that uh, sugar in the tank was one of the best, greatest analogies that in Spanish. So it's azúcar en el tanque. Like I thought it was, I thought it was one of the greatest like, you know, things but um i would say you know so much is predictable so much about sex yeah at some point is predictable hey <laughs> predictable <laughs> if he likes it go for it i mean if it ain't bothering him and she likes it makes her happy makes him happy do it his finger or her finger uh it's her finger her finger up his cool yeah was the no dude go with that order of operations yeah, yeah. yeah. because you know sometimes a caca moves back <laughs> 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 yeah, if you know, do do the proper you know I mean? maintenance like, or you know, prep work. When you go to a restaurant and you go, Are you guys open and then everybody goes, oh, we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody in there. They're we're closed. <laughs> you know, so you, you don't get you know like oil, you know, the tank, you put this dipstick in, maybe you get a little bit of oil <laughs> in there and you're like, All right, it needs more oil. But, uh, you know, not we don't think uh, a deviant or a pervert or anything no, like that. No, no, no. Just so. tell them to clean their school before they go That's to bed. That's all. There you go. This is a very sex positive yeah. podcast. Uh, That's a very sex positive. Clean your culito, yeah. Your sugar walls of Mateo, what's that? <laughs> your sweet sensations. Sugar, oh my goodness. Okay. Sugar walls. A man can have sugar walls in Mateo's life. Mateo, like, uh -huh. sugar wall. He's like, oh. Okay, uh, we got another. <laughs> keeping these in the in the love for now. Another. Uh, well, I'll just let him tell you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Hi, George. <laughs> God, What's up? up? So here it comes. I'm 30. I live alone. I have a neighbor across the street who is like this super milf. She's hot. She's Mexican. She works out all the time. Ooh. I see her on her porch, and her daughter's also super bangy. But we're getting to know each other. I'm loving my apartment. The thing is, she's a Trump supporter, and I'm living right here in El Sereno. And when I come over, we hang out, we have drinks, and then she, gets she just unloads <laughs> yeah. everything to me about her bitterness toward immigrants, how the community's dropping because of just, bullshit just backwards trump rhetoric so he sort of goes on for a while i can keep playing it if you want to but that's that's definitely the gist of it right there you know what if he can't get his bottle start straight dump her at you know it, would you say that if he can get hard he should regardless of her political i don't care yeah. about her. hit it if 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 that turns him off then stay away find somebody else hit on her daughter but that tell you what, if you want to if you want a clean way out of the one relationship, <laughs> yeah, no. But she says she's cool. She's a milf. She's not Latina too, right? Latina Trump supporter. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, they're out Sounds there. Like There's no, you know, yeah. the, the the craziest thing is to think that because I'm not a supporter and you are, that's you. Don't yeah. fucking hate me because I'm not, and I'm not going to hate you because you are. Whatever. You can't I'm take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get over it. It's all about the sex. You can't get the take the heat. That get some of those little trapitos that clean your hole, the, the little anal bleach wipes. <laughs> there you go. That's advice for, for the last sugar guy water. as well, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there you go. And there was a little bit of it, too. He went on to say, like, she's very into yoga, and he felt like all those principles of sort of, like, peace and harmony are very opposite of the Trumpety stuff. So oh, ultimately, They are very opposite. Tell him to stop chingando. Jeez. He, but he's thinking about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Then I want to, you know, you go for it. Get over it. Go for that ugly girl but, that lives next door. But, I mean... Who knows? Political beliefs? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't date a red hat, but he's thinking too much. He's, he's thinking too much. Yeah, yeah, he's just thinking too much. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're not gonna marry her. Just get back at him. All right, there you go. Just get I, back at I, him. I, <laughs> that is the headline. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Tell him to talk to Ricky. Oh, actually, this guy. Uh, uh, yeah, this guy left. Talk to Ricky. One. Ricky, he, Ricky has it right. All right, we got another one from the same same gentleman here. Oh my God! Hi, George. What's up? What's up, dude? It's me again. Yo, I got another one for you. So, I am a sex addict, and I belong to, and I've been going to 12-step programs for about three years now. This is the same dude? And yeah, same dude. With the finger in the culo or the milk? The milk. Uh, Super milk neighbor. I have a really neighbor. close friend in the, in the program who is also, uh, well, he's, uh, he's El Salvadorian, but... We're really the only young guys in the in the group or in our what's considered a sex addict meeting um but like if it's at the point i pause like if it's at the point where you're going to a meeting for it you're definitely a sex addict. no no but i mean it, it, what, what's the difference between a, just a dude that hits a lot of bangs yeah. a lot of chicks what, versus what, a, what sex about a sex addict or a maniaco you know it, yeah you could be difference? a fucking maniaco yeah I don't know. I, think, never, I, th I mean, I do think, like, medically, the definition would be if it starts to, if it's maladaptive, if it's getting in the way of other stuff in your life. It's like, you know, you have a hard time. <laughs> I you love can't, Grant. Like, he knows, man, because me, <laughs> listen, I'm not going to, you know, dis disassociate the virus to the importance <laughs> of it. But, you know, I do a lot of things with this hand, and I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's not maladaptive, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so if, it, if it gets in your way... Yeah, if it's starting to, like, interrupt other healthy... Fun, like maybe I tried to jack off and drive one time, and I, could, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how people... Hey, that was in the Disneyland I couldn't that stay car. hard. That was in Utopia Disneyland. <laughs> Even in Utopia, I couldn't. It was in one of those teacups. I couldn't, do it. Around. I couldn't do it. I don't know if anybody can do it because you have to focus on the road. Yeah, well, it's hard to do it. It's certainly hard to do it to yourself while you're driving. Like you could maybe receive while driving, then you're oh, yeah, less true. to I'm focus on. Well, you know, I'm always by myself. <laughs> um, that's what the 14 freeways for. Fucking <laughs> 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 okay, nobody's ever out there. Uh, so again, nobody's he, ever out there. <laughs> <laughs> he continues to go on for a little bit, but ultimately his his thing is. Um, so he he thinks he's he's a him and this other um, gentleman are the only two like non-white dudes in this other like they're in this recovery group for uh, sex addiction. It's in a twelve-step program, and everyone else is a white dude. And so he's a little bit. Uh, is it like an AA? Like you meet. Yeah, it's basically that. Like, to, they have their own, for pretty much everything you can be addicted to, they'll have some sort of, like, 12-step thing. So it's basically AA for sex addicts. Exactly. And so these guys are like, I don't know what to do. Like, he's not, I can keep playing it, too. I don't want to over no, no, no. him. But it's like, um, you know, when people But it's a sharing, real issue, yeah. It, it is. And, you know, Let, well, let's hear some more. Let's yeah, see. yeah, let's, let's get it from his. You understand what that is, like, sex addict? attention that basically everyone else other than us is, like, this old white guy. And... I know that this is, it's like about recovery, about like healing our, healing our wounds and becoming better people, but it's kind of hard to find inspiration to be better when the narrative, the overall narrative in the recovery, in the recovery rooms is from the perspective of a white male. And it's like, how do I, how do you bring that up and or do we just start our own thing? Does that make sense that they would be from no, a white male's and, and, perspective? And, and I, I've got, I've got a basic question. Number one, from a white male perspective, how does he know? How does he perceive? It's, it's his perception, and perception is reality to the perceiver. But how does he, re, how does he think it's a white, white man's uh, thing only? And and second of all, I'm having difficulty believing his whole story about being sexually addictive when he just got got done telling us on another tape that he's got this MILF right across the street and he ain't talking about hitting it. He's complaining about everything she's doing. Where, where if a it was a sex addict, yeah, he'd be hitting it. Yeah. So I, I have confidence. Maybe it's the politics that turns him off, but on somebody else, it's yeah. never an issue. Yeah, if we're thinking maladaptive, maybe he's like in the middle of, and I'm totally guessing, right, but maybe he's in the middle of like hating himself because he can't stop sleeping with this woman and couldn't disagree with her more. He's like, you know, that part is could be tearing him apart beyond me trying to get into his shoes here 
Who knows what that is? Stay, I mean, in, stay in the course. Is there more? Is there more? Uh, he keeps going. I mean, yeah, let's hear it. So how do we go around saying that we're um, we're we're, help, we're we're self-identifying sex addicts, and also that we need our own methods of healing? It sounds like I already know what I'm saying, but I don't it's think really it's really hard. I don't. I, how. I mean, what place is identifying a sex addiction from a white man's point of view? It would just be a colorless behavior, exactly. right? I don't think you would be saying, you know, they used to put little monitos up and there were always little white dolls, you know, if we were growing up, they'd say, these people have been never looked like us. But I don't think in that, in those classes that they identify, like therapy isn't, I've been going to therapy for 20 years. To me, that guy doesn't make it about being a white male. He just makes it about... You know the issues that a person has, not a white person has. Maybe that maybe. You know, if he's having trouble, we are getting the message. And just listening to what he's saying, if he's having trouble, if he's having conflict, then maybe it's time to get to another group. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, as opposed to staying where he's at because he's he's not believing it and he's not giving it a hundred percent. Maybe it's time to. If see. it's one of those group therapy things, yeah. like AA, hey, hey, you just go somewhere else. Yeah, just yeah. Get, well, I think that was, uh, he sort of uh, meanders a bit, but I think that was part of the question was like, do I start my own thing? Do I sure. bring it up with the group at large? I don't know how much my I think he should start his own thing. If it's that yeah. unique, I think he probably do, should probably start his own thing, right? Go find uh, the sexual addictive clinic by George Lopez. Wasn't that movie mm-hmm. Choke? Did you see that movie Choke with Sam Rockwell? Uh, no, I don't think I did. Did you see it? I have, yeah. Is that, is that based on like the Chuck Palahniuk yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. And what, what's the story there for, for people who well, he was there? They were sex addicts, right? Yeah. And yeah. they would choke each other, like, and that was what they would do to get off. That's to get the whole off. story, just a lot of kinky choking. I think that's the whole movie. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a real thing. That's, that's Sam Rockwell, uh, like, he sees a girl in the, yeah, he sees a girl in the class, and I think he's banging her, he's choking her. There are some Renaissance Fair or some <laughs> shit. I, I think so. Is that? Yeah, they work as reenactors in, at Colonial Williamsburg. Oh, that's hilarious! Even even better. I, that's everybody's assignment. And if there was hope for him, there's there's hope for this gentleman. Here. I think so. Yeah. There's a movie. Hey, man, watch Choke if you haven't seen it and hit us back. I'm gonna have to look it up. It's a, it's a good movie. All right, cool. I'll show you guys. This. Uh, leave us, you know. Uh, thanks for listening. Leave us a voicemail eight one eight five three three eighteen forty three. I missed you. you in those. Do we have two weeks off or no? Just one week. No, just the one. Oh fuck! I, I, shit, I missed you in a week. <laughs> See.